drive and I've still got to do my gig. Before I go on stage, I uh, get to the dressing room, I gossip with the other comedians, that's always quite good. Um, and then I, I get my notebooks out, they're over there somewhere, and I um, I just look at my stuff. You'll, you'll be looking at your notes if you're doing sort of newer stuff, just sort of check that you've got you know, all the bits that you've remembered. But you know, when you do a new routine, there's always something that you miss out. I never remember the whole thing for about a month. Um, so yeah, and then I just kind of, I just get in the zone, get in the zone. I live in Kemp Town at the moment and it's uh, yay! I love Kemp Town, it's never dull, is it? it? Really, people, I'm selling my flat at the moment and it's an area where a stage agent would describe it as vibrant. And by vibrant, they mean on any given day, at any given hour, you're likely to see a drunk man in the shop ability scooter ram raiding the window of a cab bar. <laughs> That's the Brighton welcome I like. Oh god, I love coming to Brighton. Oh, Brighton, it's so cool, isn't it? I lived in home for a year. Yeah. yeah. Don't boo. <laughs> if it's a gig where I'm kind of on trial, if you know what I mean, if I've never worked for that promoter before, you do feel a little bit of little bit of pressure. Um, and I've got I'm gigging for the army soon. And I know I'm going to be really, really nervous for all that because that's going to be quite, you know, it's going to be 300 paras that haven't slept for 48 hours who might all decide to just take their clothes off halfway through the show. That'll be a little bit... Uh, my, they are, I'm meant to be entertaining them. It's not meant to be the other way around. But I know, yeah, that's going to be quite nerve-wracking. But I think, I, think, I think everyone gets nervous at those gigs because they're sort of, you know, they're a bit wild, I think. But now the problem is... My mates bring their kids to the music festivals that I go to with them. Oh, no. Which is not really where you want to be when the mushrooms are kicking in. Because <laughs> I am basically off my tits in a field going, where did the midgets come from? There's loads of midgets around here. Did you order midgets? I didn't order, I didn't order midgets. I didn't see them on the menu. Did you order the midgets? I didn't order the midgets. Where did the midgets? There's loads of, they're freaking me out. These midgets don't like the midgets. What, 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 what? Children. <laughs> God, they are, aren't they? How on earth do people take kids to festivals? I can't look after my bag. <laughs> the gig I'm doing tonight at the Comedia, um, I love. It's, a, it's the monthly gay gig, and I really like it, because I find gay audiences are a, they're a bit more sussed than the straight audiences. They're a lot more intelligent, and I think if you've had to come out as gay, you're a bit more self-aware, and you've had to think more about where you fit in the world because you're not perceived as normal. And I just find them to be a bit more switched on than straight audiences. Give me a cheer if you remember when there weren't even seat belts in the back of cars. One, two, three. Yay! That's a lot of people in it. Never mind booster seats, we weren't even strapped in, were we? And if you'd been misbehaving, your dad would leave the door ajar. <laughs> CRB checks my ass. We didn't even have babysitters. What, did, because what would happen is you'd go to the pub with your mum and dad, but you'd be left outside in the car in the car park. You'd be fed Vim Taran crisps for three hours, because that was a balanced meal in the 70s. And then your dad would drink drive the entire family home in a car full of cigarette smoke. Then were the days. You know your insomnia is out of control when you're the only woman in a nightclub praying that someone spikes your vodka with Rehypnol. <laughs> but you got raped! Listen, I slept for 15 hours straight and I got laid. Don't knock it. <laughs> <laughs> Every single week, I'm getting another email asking me for sponsorship money. You getting this stuff off your mates? If they're there, why does it have to be my money? Why can't it be theirs, <laughs> right? They're all doing like, you know, big long cycle rides up and down mountains. And I wish these sanctimonious blackmailers would just bugger off with their effort. Because they're like that, I'm running for cancer. Really, I'm smoking for mine, you idiot. <laughs> so you've got some sick people at the back. I like that. I like that a lot. And um, so recently, uh, it's quite interesting. I was, told, I was told that I'm a MILF. 
right? But as I don't have any children, that makes me a slag. Um, <laughs> cosmetic surgery is more popular now than it's ever been. And I saw a young girl being interviewed on GMTV a little while ago, right? Uh, she was a law student, so she wasn't dense by any means. And this young girl, she was only 22, she'd already had a boob job. And she was so paranoid about her legs being thin, she had had implants in her calves. Did you know that was possible? Me neither. Me neither. That's the correct shocked face. I was like, that, what? But Lorraine Kelly, who is the voice of reason, <laughs> and who, quite frankly, should be running this country, she just leaned over and went, could you not have just gone for a wee walk? <laughs> You've been fantastic. I've been Susan Murray. Thanks a lot. Good night. <laughs>